Hello and welcome to the Chorus in the Chaos bonus episode. Today, I'm joined with Blake and we're going to talk about the latest controversy swarming the Christian Reformed Internet. And if you haven't seen it, small branch of the Internet there. Yes, for the yeah. eight people that are really upset about <laughs> right. this. No, there's more than that. So yeah. Canon Press, which was related to the CREC, which is Doug Wilson's crowd. And there's a, co a liberal arts college there called uh, New St. Andrews, I believe. And they shared a video on August 28th of a, a video promoting their college, kind of calling for young men and a certain type of student to join to join the ranks of their organization, to go through their college. And um, again, Canon Press and all in the CREC shared it. And there's been a lot of controversy surrounding it because in the video, which I'll play in a minute, what you see is, and I'll edit it when it's when it's aired live, but what you'll see is it shows Johnny Cash giving the middle finger, and it says that they're that they're looking for people who want to and I'm paraphrasing it, we'll look at it here in a second, but want to give the middle mm -hmm. finger to idolatry. Right. And as you can imagine, anytime you do something like that in a Christian community, people people get worked up about it because we sh Christians don't do that, right? Yeah, yeah, it's seen as something vulgar. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So before we before we go any further, let me uh, let me share. Share my screen here, and um, and I'm gonna. Blake, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, I can see. It. You got it there. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna play this. So this is the this is the ad from New St. Andrews College. Wanted, young men to rebuild Western civilization, must be unafraid of pain, blisters, intellectual rigor, and a lifetime of long shifts with swords and shovels digging ditches, repelling invaders, and reading stacks of books taller than their fathers. Must be impervious to manipulative women of all sorts, giggling virgins, cyber skanks, and even full cauldrons of Karens or hand-wringing clergy, but always seeking to hear and heed the words of Lady Wisdom. Immune to the leadership of hypocrites and LARPing online masculinitats, unaffected by abusive authorities, <laughs> petty professors, and all brokers of official respectability. Willing to hoist the Jolly Roger and Johnny Cash's favorite finger whenever faced with idolatry. Long-suffering joy and determination required. Must be willing to dwell among the tombs and graves of the long dead seeking truths that cannot die. Exhaustion guaranteed. Conflict guaranteed. Mortality guaranteed. New St. Andrews College, liberal arts for the undaunted. Well, where do I sign up? Yeah, so there you have it. So there, there's the video. In yeah, going to college is just like storming <laughs> Omaha That's Beach. Exactly what my college experience yeah. was like. Yeah, right. I still remember the blisters I got from the papers I was writing. <laughs> yeah. So what's our take? So we had a number of people when this video came out, and I made one little kind of silly post about it. Of course, the comments went went wild, but someone actually asked us in the comments, well, would you do a podcast about this? And that's why we're we're doing this. So what's our take? I'll just say kind of out front, I think it's well-intended, but the, they, they missed the mark. Yeah. And and I've mm -hmm. got we've got three reasons right. I mean, I really like the the thrust of what they're trying to do. You know, they're trying to rebuild masculinity in our culture, and I think sure. that's, that's sure. needed. Yeah, which has taken major hits over the past decade. Major hits for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to be entertaining, which it is an entertaining video. I mean, they've it got everyone just from, now. Yeah, yeah, from Kamala yeah. Harris to Russell Moore to there was a lot going on there. Yeah, there was a lot going on. Yeah, there. right, right. But I think I think where the where they fall is, and I'm sure we'll see, receive no end of criticism from it, is is just the intent to be provocative, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think in in a lot of ways with what they're trying to do, they bit off more than they can chew. They went too far. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Those are kind of my thoughts, and I've got three reasons why. Blake, what are your, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I mean, I I'm I'm with you on on there's there's a desire. It is apparent to be provocative. And I think, and this is not original thought to us, but something we had talked about because we had seen yeah. somebody else say it was, you know, it's, this is an example of, of cultural Christianity on the other side of, of the spectrum. So, you know, you get, you know, you get this one side of people that try to, you know, draw others in with like this skewed view of what Christianity is like in a more liberal sense. But here is just, I mean, this is something you see again and again, kind of in the crack is, there's 
as as good intentioned as it may be, they end up they end up putting up um, standards that are not necessarily biblical standards. And this is yeah. an issue, like when we talk about, like, well, what is biblical masculinity, and what does that look right. like? I mean, they have a very they have a very specific sense of what masculinity is, um, which I would argue, and you can listen to our podcast on biblical masculinity. I would argue is not um, their understanding of biblical masculinity, though it may include facets of biblical masculinity. Uh, it's not the whole the whole. It's not picture. the full picture. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to yeah. say. It's it's yeah. a it's a it's a big section of it, right? It's not right. even it's not, when you say it's like it's a minority section, but it is not the full picture. Um, and one of the things that I found kind of sad, like if, if you looked when I shared the post, there was. They played the video and it was on social media, right? So there was the the caption right next to it, and right. I actually thought the caption was was as good. And it's a mm-hmm. shame to me that there just seems to be this this disconnect between the caption of what they wrote and then mm-hmm. the Moscow mood or you know whatever yeah. phrase you want to use of what, what's in the video. And I'll I'll mm-hmm. read it really quick. So in the in the, again for the caption for the video, they said to reform the West and recover its glory, we must cultivate men guided by the enduring virtues of faith, hope, and love. Men whose strength is drawn drawn from the joy of truth and the freedom it brings. These are men undeterred by the pressure of pain, conflict, discomfort, or even death. They remain resolute in the face of threats, mastering righteous self-restraint in the, the presence of temptation. Their laughter echoes from unyielding joy, even across the battles around them, while they rage with increasing ferocity. And it goes yeah, on. So, so, so that is, I mean, who doesn't agree with that? Like, yeah. that's very good. It's good. Like, like you could, like I could easily pick that up as a as a men's mission statement or yeah. something like that. But the the thing is, and I think and you and you brought it out uh, earlier, Jack is. But that's not what the focus is. No one's like, talking that's not about what, that. Whatever, what's everybody <laughs> coming away with? Not that, but that it's you need to give the finger to idolatry, like yeah, Saint Johnny Cash. Yeah, you know. And so it, yeah, it's it just it. I mean, I don't know. I guess you could. I guess you could. could I guess you could blame the consumer uh, for that, but also there's some blame to the media team that put something so unnecessary. It was unnecessary, yeah. and, it, and, with, and, and, I and it draws away from the the message, or maybe it's, it's just driver marketing to get people talking about it and doing podcasts. And things like <laughs> here we are. We're falling right into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Wilson chortles to himself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I'm with you, Blake. I, it's a shame because I, I, I think, and I, and for people I know who have been involved in NSA in college, like every report I hear is good. Like I think, I think it's a great college. Like this isn't a knock against the education. Like everything I've heard about it, the people who have been there that I've talked to, it's great. Mm-hmm. The problem is you have this now this marketing ploy that is that everything is becoming focused on the middle finger, and and unfortunately this this has been a I mean, Kevin DeYoung wrote about it, I don't know, three, six months ago, some of the, the Moscow mood, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and it just, there tends to be this, this trend of provocativeness from that, right. from that camp. Right. So, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and, and I just, it's, it's a shame because I, I do think there's some good things that the CREC is doing. I think there's, there's some smart people out there and there's some people who, yeah. some very godly people who are, right really looking to do the wrong, the right, right things. Right. And this just becomes a distraction in my yeah. opinion. So I think anyway. too, that one of the dangers too, is the, in, in a, in the desire to be provocative to maintain that you have to be more provocative. Yeah. So you have to, you so you have to, you know, deeper, make more, you know, outlander statements and things like that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's the very problem that, um, like continuationists and um you know uh, like pentecostals apostolic pentecostals stuff like that is you know if you talk to somebody you can get a transparent moment there's just that seeking of like the next experience and the next right. feeling and, right and it feels like within this branch there's always a there's always a sense of well you need to be more edgy you need to be right. more i mean because even like when they do no quarter november and things like that which i think we've all seen i mean even the 
even the uh, the videos that they put out, you know, to announce and everything, they're they're more extreme. It, it always becomes it's kind of become a joke of what's Doug Wilson going to light on fire this year? Like it's going to be <laughs> it's got to be something bigger. It was only a truck last year. This year it's got to be a semi truck or something. You know, what I mean, so right. like there's there's like this pursuit of it needs to be bigger, it needs to be louder, it needs to be more crass and brash and everything. And I think this is just right. an example. This is just an example of that. I mean. That the, that the statement that was given next to the post can't stand on its own. It has to have some kind of inflammatory, wild, you know, uh, right. thing to go along with it to drive the point home. And that's just like, how can you maintain that? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. not that's not how, I mean, we don't live our daily lives like that. I don't think anyway. You don't light things on fire? No, <laughs> every day. They're, they're no. trucks and, yeah, okay. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I, we've got three reasons why why we think this was not wise, right? Yeah. And again, mm-hmm. I, w- I want to preface this and, and do this with with grace and be, quote unquote, as pastoral as I can be. I'm not just tearing down the whole CREC, Doug Will, like the whole thing. You know, there's a lot of good stuff that they do. Like I said, I th- everything I've heard from NSA is actually great. Like I think the, the college is a is a really strong mm-hmm. college. Mm-hmm. It's just this decision to put this in the marketing. Like, yeah, I kind of yeah, kind of missed the missed the boat. yeah, m- yeah. missed the mark. So. Number one, and, and this, if you followed any online discussions, this this was all over. But it's a, it's a good point. It's right out of scripture, right? Number first issue, uh, Paul says very plainly in Ephesians 4.29, uh, 4.29, excuse me, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. You know, and you could be like, well, it's it's a hand gesture. It's not corrupting talk. Well, <laughs> it's not coming out of my mouth. Sorry, Jack. Yeah. Thanks, Pharisee. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, we get what Paul's talking about here. It's it's out of the heart, right? This is and there becomes an element where Christians just shouldn't be doing that stuff. Right, right. Yeah. And then like in and then and then there's also an issue what we've seen a lot in the comments is trying to make like the anomaly the rule or the exception the rule, you know. I mean right. I mean, because you know, there's always people who well, what about Elijah? What about Elijah and the prophets of Baal? You know, he was being, you know, pretty crude and crass and things like that. It's like, okay, but you're not Elijah and you're not fighting the prophets of Baal. <laughs> like, okay, like, it's not like the, you're not, I don't under, I don't think you understand, you know, fully like what's going on here, yeah. you know? And, and again, this is not just simply, this is not simply just a desire. Uh, it wasn't Elijah standing up there going, oh, I'm going to get a little wild right now, you know? Right. It's not a marketing ploy. Which is right. what it feels like this is. This feels like it's a, a market. It very, I mean, it, and, and is there a time, like, is there a time for like strong and direct language? Absolutely. But it's not every day. And it's not in the promotion of your college video. Agreed. Uh, okay. Number two, I would argue, and this is, again, this whole thing is, is built around building, reforming the West. And there's, and as it says, they're seeking young, you know, you, new young men, right? They want to build up masculinity. Yeah. Yeah. And I would argue that a key characteristic a, and a key characteristic of biblical masculinity is the character trait of self-control. Self-control. Yep. Right. Um, and, and this just generally speaking, and I'm sure people will quibble with this, but this, this idea of walking up and, and flipping off an idol, yeah. there's nothing about it to be like, well, I'm, I'm in control of what I'm doing. Well, yeah, I know exactly. Yeah. It doesn't feel like someone who's, who's in self-control. Right. And we, and by the way, we did a whole episode last season on uh, biblical masculinity. And we talked about this. So you can go listen, listen to that, but right. Yes. I mean, self-control In fact, was it, uh, was a book I read by, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on his name. The, the blogger. Charlie's. Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Charlie's. So Charlie's wrote a book on, on masculinity. And he basically says that, like he has all these chapters and he says, if I were to sum all these chapters up on what a biblical man looks like or what mm-hmm. biblical masculinity is, you could sum it up as someone who is, who has, who's master self-control basically. Right. right. And, and I think he makes a good point because our best example of this, when you, when you compare, well, well, what is our example of masculinity? It's in the person of, of Jesus. It's in Christ, right. the God man. Mm-hmm. And Christ mm-hmm. was, of, I mean, he was always in control. He was self-control. Oh, he was never self-control. outlandish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So I don't know Th- this, yeah, this so, nature yeah. of just walking around flipping off idols or, or mm, right, and in right, the video, yeah. I don't know when they put the, I, you know, flipping off and it says idolatries, it showed the thing from the Olympics. Like, mm. so now we're, we're going to flip off who right, idols. Right, like, I don't, yeah. I don't so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. People I mean, like, I what, are you, what are you getting at? Yeah. Right. It's the, 
I mean, I have to believe with the sentiment that they're getting at. They're getting toward the sentiment of resisting idolatry. Yes. But how do you – like if somebody if somebody was to come into your office and say, you know, help me. You're a Christian. How do I resist idolatry or how do I fight idolatry or how do I practically approach idolatry? You, you don't – you what, you tell them to give it the finger? I mean it does – like that's, that is yeah. so – it's so unhelpful. I mean, well, let's and, talk about we need what we need to look at is the example of Christ. Yes, and Christ exhibiting uh, supreme love for the Father. Everything that the Father sets out for him, he's always about the Father's business. He's always concerned with what the Father has for him and things like that. So, emulating that, I mean, in any area, idolatry or any other area, um, there has to be the supreme love of God that drives out any other. You know, issue, yeah. which is the exact thing of Christ. You know, zeal has eaten, you know, zeal for his father's house has eaten him up and driving out the money changers and, and things like that. Did yep. Christ take um, bold action? Did he speak boldly? Did he do all those things? Yes, but he's always in self control and he always does so with his father's glory in mind and for the good. And we would, we would of course, say now, uh, acting on part of the good of the bride yeah. as well. Uh, yep. Yep. Completely agree. And yeah. you know, there, there's some irony here because there's this entire push to build up young men, like to mature young men in the right way. When this, to me, this whole nature of flipping off idolatry, if that's the response to me, that that is a very immature response. Like that is right. It's the opposite of what we should be going for. Right. Right. So, yeah. Right. Um, okay. Well, the, and then the third one here, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap up. So you say, well, you know, wh why do you think all this, right? Why, how then should we respond to, to idols? And I, and I actually think we have a clear example of this in scripture. So in, in Acts 17, starting in verse 16, you'll, and I'll read it here, but you'll, you'll hear that Paul is provoked by idols. He's walking mm -hmm. around, he sees all these idols and he's, he's irritated, right? So right. we see this exact situation. Here. Right, right. Yeah. Threatened yeah. by idols. Right. Well, listen to how he responds. Does he, does he flip them off, right? Listen to what he says. Now, Paul, and this is Acts uh, 17, verses 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. Now, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw the city was full of idols. Mm -hmm. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. In other words, he camped out. He stayed put, right? And he reasoned and shared the gospel and preached Christ, right? Right. How? I mean, just compare the contrast from flipping right. some something off and then I don't know. What do you do? You, you right. Flip like somebody off, you leave like, at that point. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's not. Uh, it's it, to give somebody the finger is not exactly leaving open doors for conversation. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> right. This is not some a conversation. Best, you know, some of my best, most deep conversations I've ever had have begun with somebody flipping me off. You know? <laughs> no. You know, I mean, again, so again and I know yeah. people are going to get in the comments and say, like, well, it's not actually, you know, you're not actually saying, you know, to flip off or whatever, you know, but again, that's the thing that's, that's put out and that's the sentiment that's put forward. And that's just not the example we have in scripture. The scripture, yeah. what we have is Paul is a very godly, very reasonable man who's willing to do the hard work of actually getting into a conversation and trying to convince someone relying on the spirit of God and things like that, rather than the easy thing, which would have been just to blow up and like, you know, think yeah. that you're some kind of old Testament prophet when you're, when you're not, you know, that's a really good point. I didn't think about that. That's a really good point though. It, it is. It's, it's a harder, more self-controlled labor to, right. to, to be provoked. Right. Yet stay where you are and then reason with the people. In fact, verses uh, 22 through 24 so we get an idea of what he what he says here. So Paul, mm -hmm. standing in the midst of the, how do you say that word? Areopagus. Areopagus said, quote, men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects in your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown. This I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live by temples made by man, and so on and so forth. But yeah. again, he's provoked to the point of, I'm going to have a conversation because his maturity level, his level of self-control, mm -hmm. he's not just lashing out. He's, he's inviting conversation. 
he's meeting them where there's that. Like there's this being all things to all people type thing going on. Like yeah. he's, yeah, he, right. he's, he's, this is what, you know, let me communicate this, this, whatever knowledge you think you have. Let me, mm -hmm. let me explain how this is the true mm -hmm. God of the universe. Mm -hmm. And it's that kind of response that shows me that an individual is actually having those conversations. Right. Because I mean, we all know, like is, is Christians listener, myself, Jack, uh, we all have relationships and those that we know who don't know the Lord. And we handle those things firm, fair, friendly, and yeah. delicately, and with finesse and grace. Because if you just go in with guns blazing, what's going to happen? I mean, you, you being the only voice maybe of Christianity in their life will immediately be shut down because you're more interested in lobbing heads off than right. actually seeing hearts, you know, converted. And so in all of this, I mean, Paul's response shows me, Paul actually has a genuine concern for the people, though they are idolaters, though yeah. they are into all kinds of crazy and wild stuff, though their whole culture is built around that. I mean, these guys are, you know, complaining, and, and rightfully so in some degrees, of the, the shift of Western society, which has taken place. But Paul's in a much worse, I mean, he's in a much worse place. I mean, he's yeah. in a place where there's, you know, state sanctioned and state paid for idolatry. And, yeah. you know, and all of these things are, you know, being forced. It's part of not only the religious community, but the governmental community. And I mean, everything, the socioeconomic community, all of it is surrounding idolatry. And this is how he responds. I think yeah. there's something definitely there for us to learn. Um, here he, he engages with them. He doesn't flip them off and, and walk away. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, so it's just, yeah, it is, that is not maturity. I, I, you, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't no, think so. it's not. So, well, there you have it. Of course, in the chaos, uh, three reasons why we're, we're not entirely on board with this marketing program for New St. Andrews College. Again, I think in general, I'm a fan of what New St. Andrews College is doing, but the tech team or marketing team or... <laughs> Doug Wilson himself. I don't know. You know maybe, it together. This is all, maybe, maybe we're just all victims of just extremely good marketing. It's just, maybe. they knew it was going to be inflammatory and it was going to get people talking about it. And here we are, Jeff, we've played right into it. Yeah. You well, know, I expect go a back and check don't, for listener, turn this off. Don't just go back and don't yeah. listen to it anymore. Yeah. You didn't, don't you be didn't part hear of the anything. problem. Yeah. You didn't hear any the, of this. The men in black <laughs> right, right. flash thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You did not just waste a half hour of your time <laughs> listening to us talking. Yeah. Anyway. So, well, anyway, all right. we would say young men pursue godliness and Christ likeness. Yes. Not Johnny Cashness. This has been Amen. the chorus in the characters.